Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be installing this ChargePoint electric vehicle charger in Oceanport, New Jersey. This person, this customer, I should say, found me here on YouTube and asked me if I do his. It's right around the corner from where I've been working in Oceanport. This person's house has got some really nice trim, some AZAC trim around the windows and doors. So I asked him, would you like me to mount this charger on a piece of AZAC? It's actually not AZAC. It's a sheet of uh, PVC, like a sheet of plywood that I've had for a while. And I've just been using small pieces like this to do various jobs. I'm using this DeWalt fold-out table. It's on sale usually around Christmas time from Black Friday until New Year's. It's a great table. It's got the holes in there. So I'm using these clamps. Uh, that will clamp this workpiece right to the table so I can use a hole saw for where the conduit will come into the charger through the back. Now when I use a hole saw here to run conduit through it, I always make the hole just a little bit bigger than it needs to be. This way I have a little bit of wiggle room so I can get that charger in the middle of this uh, mounting plate and uh, still have a little bit of wiggle room to get it to be exactly where I need it to go. If you make the hole the exact same size as the conduit, you might have some issues getting it centered. So that's why the hole's a little bit bigger than the actual three quarter inch conduit that I'm using. The charge point electric vehicle charger comes with a template and on the top it's going to be a screw that actually holds it in place while the other two set screws are set in place to mount the vehicle charger. And so it's real simple, you just pencil out those marks and then I'm going to mount this board to the house and then I will mount the charger to the board after bringing the PVC through the hole from the garage side. It was a beautiful day, obviously you've seen in the news about this crazy fire in Canada and all the smoke, I don't know, it's been a couple days here now. Anyhow, uh, I drew a little pilot hole where we want to put the charger. This is right here. The homeowner was home to show me exactly where he wanted it. So I drilled a pilot hole through to the garage side to see where it came out. We're good. We're in between two stud bays, so there's no problem there. And so I'm going to use the same exact size hole saw I used to make the hole on the mounting board to make through the side of the house here. Uh, now someone had mentioned in the comments a while back about starting the hole saw in reverse. I do that. I've been doing that for a long time, and I do that here. Of course, working with vinyl siding in warm temperatures is a lot easier than working with vinyl siding when it's cold. When it's cold, you could snap it, it can crack, it can lead to a whole bunch of problems. So you gotta be a lot more careful when you're working with it in the winter time. So I'll push this piece of three quarter inch PVC through the hole and then I'll mount my plate. I'll mark it and then cut my PVC so that it's flush with this mounting plate and then I'll come back and I'll put the male adapter on the vehicle charger and uh, mount my equipment. If you like this video please hit the like button thank you. Now here I'm just using two inch um, galvanized coarse screws or two and a half inch to mount the board. And then, of course, that vehicle charger will cover up those screw holes. That screw I'm putting in right there is actually what the charger mounts to. And then you'll see here, once that charger is up on the board, you no longer see those mounting screws. And then I use two uh, stainless steel two-inch core screws here to mount the bottom side of this uh, charger. Now, the charger does come with some hex head screws, and I didn't realize that until this thing was already in. Uh, but I'm sure these number eight screws, these stainless screws, are fine and this thing's not going anywhere. This is a really neat charger and uh, I've done a few of these before. The nice thing about these is that you can hardwire them and you don't have to worry about putting the receptacle in. The 
the receptacle is nice so you have a disconnect right there but uh, obviously I'm a big fan of identifying my circuits with labels as you see in most of my videos I think I do a pretty good job of labeling circuits and labeling devices and boxes or what exactly they are so should it be somebody else that comes in and works on this property they know exactly what is what <clears throat> now he has a 200 amp panel here uh, but when they put this in I think in 2012 I think he told me right after Sandy I think he bought the house I think pretty sure that's what he said they give him a 200 amp service but they only gave him a 30 circuit panel which to me is not getting the, the real value of a 200 amp panel uh, the 200 amps you're going to need because a lot of electrical devices, but more than anything, you want to have the 40 spaces at a minimum. Uh, so that never made any sense to me that you put in a 30 circuit panel, but I wasn't there, so I didn't make that decision. And uh, I don't know, that's a poor one if you ask me to, uh, to put in a 200 amp service with only 30 circuits when you can have 40 or even 60 or even 80 circuits with a 200 amp panel. But he did have one space in here, uh, a 50 amp double pole circuit that he was no longer using and it was off when I got there so we disconnected the load that was connected to it I'm not exactly sure what it went to maybe an oven but I'm not sure but I was able to use the existing circuit breaker in the panel to connect this new electrical vehicle charger so this house I want to say was built in maybe the 60s or the 70s and this sheetrock is like uh like a plaster sheetrock. So I had to drill pilot holes uh, for my zip it anchors that I like to use. So once the pilot hole goes in, then the, the zip it anchor, I can screw right in with the impact driver, then come back with the screws to attach the strap to the wall. Once I get up to the top here, uh, there's a top plate, which is a double two by four, and I just put the screws right to the top, to the wood wooden top plate there. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe, and I encourage you to leave some comments down below. I try to answer all of your questions in the comments or at least respond to them. Some of them I don't get to, some of them are a little ridiculous, and I think if you leave a ridiculous comment and I don't answer it, I think you know why. Uh, so you see those two pieces of EMT, I'm not sure where they're going, they're going up, one's going outside, I'm not sure what's there, maybe a light. And the other one goes up into the ceiling there. So I have to do what's known as a saddle bend over that piece of, pe over the piece of EMT. It's not a big saddle bend, but uh, I warmed up the oven, the PVC oven, and went right over that uh, with very little difficulty. Here's where I wish I had somebody to help me do this work. But uh, so I'm using one ladder. I probably could have had two ladders. I actually do keep two four-foot ladders in my truck, but I left it at uh, some lady's house in Garwood, my friend Lisa, and uh, so I only had the one four-foot ladder here, and I didn't think the eight-foot ladder was necessary, so I made the best of it with just the one four-foot ladder. And so there's basically two 90s. There's one 90 when I come out of the panel. There's another 90 up at the ceiling, and then another 90 on the other end until I get to the LB. So no more than 360 degrees of bends allowed in any one conduit run. If you do have more than that, you have to put in what's known as a pull box. And the LB would constitute, <clears throat> probably not the right word, uh, would be okay for the pull box. It's an accessible point to pull the conductors. Uh, so again, the three quarter inch PVC, every three feet, you got to have a strap. So I never put, and I, I use as many straps as I think is necessary. If they're two feet apart, that's fine. Uh, they just can't be three feet apart. And of course, within 12 inches of where they terminate inside the panel and the PVC. So obviously there's a lot of wire nuts and a lot of wires in this particular panel. Um, there's a generator, a standby generator. So there's only select circuits. It doesn't do the whole house. I didn't see the generator, but I imagine it's less than a 20 kilowatt generator. And that's why they had that uh, a Generac service service box there. All right, so now I'm going to get ready and start pulling my conductors. I am pulling. Well, first I'm going to use my Milwaukee um, 
uh, I forget the material this is, but it's like a plastic. And I like using it because it's non-conductive. And so I'm gonna push this through from the panel over to the LB, and then I'm gonna set up my wires over by the LB. And for the majority of this run, and it's only, it's less than 30 feet, I'm gonna push the conductors through the PVC rather than pulling them. At some point, I do go over here and pull them, uh, but obviously this panel's live right here, so I gotta be really careful not to touch any uh, of the live terminals and get a bad shock or, or worse. So I push this through and then um, I set up my wires, my, my wires, my conductors. So I have this racketeer, um, I guess this tool to, to set up the, the, the spools of wire here. I forget what they call it. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm running two number six THHN copper conductors and one number 10 copper conductor for the equipment grounding conductor. So only three wires on this bit to go on. Now, when you're running to a receptacle for electric vehicle charger, that receptacle needs to be GFCI protected. However, if you're running direct wire or hard wire right to the electric vehicle charger, no neutral is necessary and no GFCI protection is necessary. I shouldn't say any neutral. I haven't run across any of these charges that require neutral. Uh, but for the receptacle, it's a four-wire setup, and you have to run the neutral, and you have to have the GFCI protection. That's what the code says. Yeah, so here, so as you can see, I'm just pushing these through. And this is a lot different than years ago. The, the insulation on these conductors now is something called Simple, and it's like a slick PVC base around the, the insulation that makes it easy to pull. Uh, when I first started doing electrical work, we didn't have that. This came about maybe 15 or 20 years ago. And at the time, it was, wow, this is fantastic. Now, I couldn't imagine pulling conductors without it. So it was pretty easy. I basically pushed these conductors all the way to the other side. Uh, and then when I got close around that second 90 there, I had to pull a little bit from the panel. All right, so now I'm going to terminate these conductors. And it's real simple to do. This particular charger actually comes with a cord that you can plug in so we got rid of that and I used the knockout that was in the back of the box where I came through with the conduit to fill the hole where the old cord was coming through into the bottom this is I really can't say enough good things about this particular charger the charge point this is really really nice product now when I'm terminating here these are like Wagos uh, these terminals and I found them very easy to, to use. You strip back about a half inch of these conductors. Everything's color coordinated. So you know where to put your equipment grounding conductors and where your hot conductors go. It's pretty simple. And then once I terminate the line side conductors here, I'm gonna connect the load side cord body that actually goes to the car for the charger. That's coming up shortly. It's pretty simple. You gotta read the directions here. I did that. Actually, I watched a couple of videos here on YouTube. Uh, before I started doing these and I've done a few of these in the past this comes up in here <clears throat> and then instead of using a lock nut they have this this cable cord this cable I forget what they call it but this little the cable clip that clips on there that keeps it attached to the uh, enclosure here yeah see that little strap right there uh, that is a communication cable that I got in my hands right there in my fingers there now uh, that's for connecting to the Wi-Fi through the app so you can control and, and monitor your car's charging. And then uh, this is also color coordinated and they got their own built-in stab locks on there, not stab locks, the uh, terminals. And you just close the doors here and lock it in place like a Wago. There's the final result. Well, not the final <laughs> result. I'm gonna put the cover over the wiring terminals here. And then the final faceplate and uh, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button. If you'd like to subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. Leave a comment down below on what you think about this charger. I believe the cord that goes from this charger to your car is... I think I read 23 feet. I didn't measure it, but 
This is where the guy said he wanted to put it, so this is where we got it. It's gonna go, you need to charge a car inside the garage, which I don't think he's gonna park there because it's a gym. He uses it as a gym in the house. Uh, but if it's right there outside, you can be able to charge. I think he's getting a Mustang uh, electric vehicle, to be honest with you. I really wish I saw that. All right, so here's the 50 amp double pole circuit breaker. I'm gonna attach this outside of the, um, the bus and then push it back in when I'm done here. And notice that there's no GFCI breaker here. It's not necessary, it's only for the receptacle. We are live. And just very carefully put the panel cover back on. You'll notice there in the lower left-hand corner that there is a solar array somewhere on this property. I didn't really get too much in that. I haven't really done too much solar work over the course of my career. I worked for a contractor one time. We got up on the roof. I didn't like it, so I don't really do too much solar work. I'm not against it. I just don't. I prefer not to do it. There's enough old houses in New Jersey that need to be fixed, and that's what I'm good at. As always, guys, thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one.